Hey, this is David from Dash Off-Road and this week I'm going to show you about my diesel heater. So there's two parts to this video. So I'm going to show you how I installed it and then at the end I'm going to give you a bit of my review on what I think of the diesel heater. Uh, this is a Chinese cheapy, 250 bucks. Um, I had some queries whether this was going to be any good or not. So I'll take you through it and I'll show you the controller at the end because that is probably the trickiest part of all this. Let's get into it. Hey, this is David from Dash Off-Road, and I've bought one of these uh, diesel heaters for my caravan. It's Yeah, it's one of the cheapy ones, but hey, $251. I'm going to give it a run and see what it's like. So I've got a Jayco StarCraft 22.68, same as the Journey model. There's not a lot of space to, to put these things, so I'll, I'll show you what I'm thinking. So to give you a bit of a reference, that's the front of my caravan. The door is just there, bed. And, um, and there's the dinette over here. Now, excuse the mess, but I'm just unpacking everything to make sure it looks all cool. Ideally, this is where I wanted to put it, and this makes a lot of sense. Directly behind the hot water service, there's a space there. I can vent out that way. I can um, put the air in coming from this side, just drilling a hole through the bottom there. And that would be perfect and really ideal. However, underneath, there is just stuff going everywhere for the hot water service, gas, all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to have to resort to putting it on the other side, other side, which it's not ideal, but I think that's where it's going to have to go. So it will uh, vent into that way, that's where the hot air will go. Um, and the other side, so it's going to have to come from under the fridge, sort of a hole through there somewhere, and um, maybe a hole through this door or even maybe just leave the door open when I use the heater, I'm not sure. That's the plan. One vent installed, I haven't screwed it in, but it's just sitting there. That sits in so far nice and good. It's got clearance underneath. And so be me, this is where I put the vent. Of course, it can go here. It doesn't have to go under the fridge because there's a little channel, like when you pull the drawer out, under there so basically it'll suck from the back and go through this little channel hopefully you can see it in and around down there and vent or suck in there from the outside that way perfect well that wasn't too hard um pretty easy actually i'll um yeah show you what ended up happening now I've just got to work out where to put the control panel this one's the jobby with um uh, it's got a remote as well, so I can do it from bed, turn it on and off. But I don't know if it's possible, but I'm going to try and put it up here with everything else. That would make a lot of sense to put it there, but it just depends on how hard it's going to be to get from down there and channel up. Probably behind the fridge, I imagine, behind the microwave, and then out that hole and up there. I don't know, let's see what happens. So sound quality is going to be awful because it's blowing its guts out, but I've drilled, right, let's step back. So this is outside the van on the back, taking the vents out, and I've come up through the bottom here. So drilled a hole through, I didn't want to muck around with this stuff in case there was some warranty issue with Jayco, so I've drilled a hole through, got the two wires going up, so one's a power wire, the other one's the, for the controller. That'll go up and hopefully I can get behind the microwave and then put it in that nice, neat location. Now this is where the fridge exhausts, whether you can see that hopefully. So I do have to be worried about heat here. So I'm just gonna put these wires in some conduit um, just to protect it a bit and I might run it away from the exhaust. See what happens. Tip for young players, the power cord comes through there for the microwave. Unplug that first, because it's really hard to do whilst you're trying to take the microwave out. And then another great surprise, oh, two people are required to lift this out. Because it was, uh, it wasn't that hard with one, but if I pulled the plug out first, it would have been all right. Now, I'm gonna take a bit of a carriage here and drill a hole through. I know I can get to an access point behind the fridge, but it's about the same height as the fridge but I need to be at that level, not that level. 
So anyway, I'm gonna have a crack and see what happens if I drill a hole through here and see if I can get access. And then I could potentially reuse that hole and then power in underneath here. Um, that would give me power and then mount up the top. Let's see what happens. All right, so here's the tricky bit. Here's the tank. I've been waiting for a nice peaceful time to attack this because this is one of these things where brains has to somehow beat brawn. I have to get that inside the tank, somehow poke that way out the hole and then put a nut on it. So, and I'll try just like dropping it in and like doing skill tester to get it out. It's not as easy as that. So. Hopefully this works. I'm going to thread that through there. Now I'm going to try and aim for the hole, like poking it through. And in a minute, if we cut to like me with a happy face, it's worked. If <laughs> it cuts to me cracking it with another drink in my hand, it didn't work. Let's see what happens. Happy days. All right, so I've threaded it on. I've got the hole with the, the wire going right out the bottom. The idea is if I let go of this, it's going to come out the bottom and I'm going to pull it through. Here we go. <laughs> Just like that. Now, I was a bit uh, too, too eager there. Put the washer over it. The bolt. All right, I'll tighten that up and happy days. Uh, almost done. Okay, my review of this diesel heater. It was $251 to be precise. There's a heap on, of them on eBay and there were some that there was like some black with red plastic on there and I just wasn't sure about plastic and heat and all those sorts of things. So I got the only one on there that advertised as having an aluminium case. It's a white one. Um, made sense to me. If you buy if you go to like caravan camping show and buy one of these from a retail outlet they're charging about twelve hundred dollars for a, a quality version of it and without a doubt it would be a better quality one too so i'm thinking for my 250 bucks i would not be surprised if the glow plug needs replacing in a year or the fuel lines maybe need replacing in a few years time because they, they'll just pvc tubing almost like what you use for you know, running beer lines or something like that the hose clamps for the exhaust, these are the replacement ones, I'm going to put them on soon, but the ones that came with it were pretty cheap and average. The fuel filter that came with it leaked, so I went down to the hardware store and bought like a whippersnipper version for a dollar, and that's working a treat. So, you know, if you buy one of these cheap heaters, they're not perfect, but they're pretty good. How hard was it to install? Well, the wiring loom was all there. I didn't have to cut or solder or do anything. I just had to run the cables where they needed to go. So pretty easy, easy as far as electrical installation. You've got to have a little bit of guts to drill a hole through the floor and hope that nothing's underneath. The one that I bought for $250 didn't have a muffler or exhaust extension. So I'm probably going to buy that separately for another 20 bucks off eBay. So no, no big deal there. No, no screaming things to watch out for. Um, it's been installed for about a week and I've ran it almost every day and at the start there was a real bad smell coming out of it, almost like when you get a new oven in a caravan. Uh, I think that's going to dissipate over time so I'm just running it each day to um, try and get rid of that smell but I think it, I'm pretty sure it's going to go. The instructions were appalling. Basically watch this video and all the other videos on YouTube about these diesel heaters and you can learn how the controller works. How effective is it? Well, it's about 11 degrees outside at the moment and it's 24 degrees in here and it's on its lowest setting. 
Uh, if I dare turn this up, and it's, on, it's set to about 18 degrees at the moment, if I dare turn it up to maybe 25, it would cook. And without a doubt, if you wanted to, you could make it 40 degrees inside the caravan. But this is a 5 kilowatt system. It's probably a bit overkill. If there was a 2, and it was, our van's a 22 foot van, if you had a smaller van, you'd probably only want the 2 kilowatt version, I'd say. Um, both of them use stuff all fuel. Uh, I filled up the 10 litre tank and I've been running all week and it's barely moved so it's um, you don't even have to think about the fuel. It uses hardly any battery power or current so again not much to worry about there. Start up is about 7.5 amps for a few minutes and then it drops down to 1 amp or less. Okay let me explain this plug for you. So what we've got here is a few indicators and I must admit this uh, little um, screen here had me puzzled for a while and the instructions that come with it aren't that good so I'm going to tell you what everything is on there. Um, we've got the little battery symbol if that's green that means your battery is good and mine's hovering about 12.7 volts something like that at the moment. Temperature that's showing the temperature that it is now in the van 23 degrees it's quite balmy really. The fans working you can see that spinning around down here we've got a little blue symbol that looks like the fuel pump that means the fuel pump is actually working we've got the red and blue lights flickering here that means the uh, it's sucking air in and exhaust out and that speeds up the hotter it gets as well this uh, little bar graph that we've got when it's uh, just starting up this there'll be nothing there at all and then as the um, the heat exchanger gets hotter this will start to go from green to yellow to red to, so you know things are happening and um, the last symbol which isn't being shown at the moment is the glow plug and it will show up red here so that means at the moment the heater is um, the fan is spinning but it's hot enough that the glow plug doesn't need to start combusting and um, once it drops to below the temperature threshold then the glow plug will come back on and it will start to get hotter again now this is um, oh, I haven't talked about this little wireless. That is for this little baby. Yeah, yeah. So when you press lock, that turns the system off. When you press unlock, that turns the system on. So if you're laying in bed and you want your heater on, press unlock, and I don't know, in about 10 minutes, you'll be toasty warm. I'll go through what I know about the menu system here. So first of all, press this... Uh, button and it was supposed to tell you the temperature there for some reason mine says 18 I think that's trying to say 18 degrees and you can put the temperature up and down as you choose um, I keep it on its absolute lowest setting and that seems to be quite nice in here um, this is the clock you can set the clock uh, if you feel like it you can go in here and you can enter the settings and set it I generally don't set the clock because just this little screen here sucks about a half an amp, maybe a little bit less. So um, I actually turn it off altogether. I'll show you how I do that in a moment. Now the other settings that we've got here, that's to set the time. That's to set a timer, if you want the timer for when you want it to come on or when you want it to turn off. Uh, this is how to get into the, the system settings. And this bottom button, as I was saying, temperature that it is now, temperature that you're setting it to, voltage, and if there's any error messages. And it does come with a, a sheet showing what all the error messages do. At any moment, you can turn the temperature up or down, as easy as that. Okay, because the system's running, I can't show you how to prime it, but when you hook this up for the first time and you don't have a full um, fuel going through your fuel lines. What you do is you press the OK button and the down arrow button and it gives you the option to turn the fuel pump on and prime it. Um, up will turn the priming on and down will turn off. It runs for, I don't know, three minutes or something and will prime the line. And if you can't prime it in three minutes you can do it again and again and again. Although if there's too much air in the system it just won't work. It does tolerate air but not too much. If you over prime it, that's fill the combustion chamber up with too much diesel, all it's going to do is smoke out the exhaust, like it bellows smoke, so just do it as much as you need. I thought I'd show you how much this system uh, is using as far as power. Uh, at the moment, my batteries are on 12.7, so it's fairly healthy. If I press this twice, 
It's using 0.4 of an amp, so it's using nothing. I've had this system, I've spent a bit more time with it, and it probably, I reckon on average, it pulls about one amp. Start up, it's about seven and a half amps. So it uses, when you've got it set on its low voltage, it really uses hardly any power at all. It's great. To be honest, I can't find too much wrong with this thing. It's great. I really don't know why I didn't do it sooner. 250 bucks is probably the best mod I've made on this caravan f for that sort of money. It's great. Get one. Get on it. Someone should sponsor me for this. Thank you.